Glad you've come and that you're here and that we have a, a little bit of respite from the terrible heat and we can be in community and worship together. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 85 responsively between reader and people, starting with the reader. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and enlarged our all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let us your forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for God is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield his increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead and when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. And then speak of God.
is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord, Lord, Jesus, Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, find, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. O God, may your word be spoken, and may your word be heard. Amen. Amen. Israel, 
who are whores, chasing after other gods, not the Lord God of Israel. Through the naming of the children, God signifies the coming disaster and God's own disgust at the relationship. Jezreel was the site of a great slaughter, which God says will come again upon the people of Israel. Lo Ruhama means that God will have no pity on God's people. And Lo Ami means that the Israelites are no longer God's beloved. They have played the whore, and God is done. Ready to break up, get a divorce. And yet, the passage ends with a note of hope. Eventually, the people will once again be God's own. God is not willing to truly end the relationship, even though her in her anger, she, even through her anger, she does turn back to the people. The purpose of the prophet is to call the people, invite them to change and turn back to God, their true love, the one who will stay faithful to them no matter what they do. God will be faithful, even when they are not. So we know the relationship is not easy. No matter how committed we are, we will mess up, and we have to change, bend, grow, turn back to the other again and again. Sometimes the relationship is just too hard, and we leave. Sometimes in long-term relationships, we are left. If we take seriously our relationship to God, we will find this same dynamic, except that God will never leave. God will ultimately never give up on us. But we do need to change, to turn back, to bend, keep falling back in love with our beloved. That is why we have weekly worship. It is to steep ourselves in this relationship, hearing the word, singing hymns, praying prayers, confessing our sins, eating Eucharist together and supporting one another in this relationship, because we can't do it alone. Equally important is what we do the other six days of the week. Daily prayer is what nourishes our relationship to God. Without it, we may be acquaintances of God and Jesus, but we aren't really friends or lovers. So in the Gospel lesson, Jesus gives us a simple but surprisingly thorough way to pray through what we call the Lord's Prayer. It starts, Father, or really in the Hebrew, Abba, which means Daddy. It's not a formal relationship, it's a daddy, mummy relationship. Hallowed be your name. To hallow is to make holy or sacred. So hallowing the name of God means putting God above all other relationships. It's saying, God, you are the greatest. Your kingdom come. Some people use the word kindom, K-I-N, dom, or community, instead of kingdom, which has connotations of well, we don't really do kings and queens in our society. But your kingdom come is in essence saying, your presence come, breaking into our world and making our relationships and communities infused with your spirit. Your will be done. That is, you know what is right and good. Bring it to us and into our world. Give us our daily bread. We look to you to provide what we need each day, physical food and spiritual food. Forgive us our sins and help us forgive those who sin against us. This recognizes that we are going to mess up. 
and we're going to get hurt and angry at others who hurt us. So we need help in both of these areas. We need, God, your forgiveness when we mess up. And we need your help in repairing broken relationships and let going of our hurts and grudges towards others. Save us from the time of trial, or lead us not into temptation. Keep us from the worst ways we can hurt ourselves and others and get lost from you. Because really, the trials and temptation, the worst thing that they can do is cause us to be separate from God. The Lord's Prayer may be so familiar that we just say or sing it by rote, not really even thinking about it. But if we truly pray it, meaning it, living into it, we will find our relationship to God deepened daily. Do we honor God as the greatest? What food do we need this day? Do we believe that God will provide it? Where do we need forgiveness? What hurts or grudges are we holding on to? And what help do we need in repairing relationships or letting go? Where are we most in danger right now for losing faith or going down a dark path? Daily, we must turn to God. Daily, we must keep praying, keep trying, Keep loving. And Jesus gives a little stories following the prayer to emphasize persistence. The man who was in bed didn't want to get up and help his friend, but he would respond to persistence. Be persistent in prayer, knocking on God's door for the help and the bread that you need. And God will reward that persistence because, because God knows what we need. It's interesting that Jesus doesn't just say that God will give you what you ask for, but that the Heavenly Father will give you the Holy Spirit, will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. So that's curious. Does that mean that no matter what you ask for, if you ask for it sincerely, you'll get the Holy Spirit? What if you ask for a job or healing for your spouse? or help for your community. I interpret this to mean that the Holy Spirit is the best possible gift of all, no matter what we ask for. For God is willing to do even better than what we ask for and send the Holy Spirit. And think about it, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit guides and directs and comforts and strengthens and heals and gives us power and understanding and abilities to speak and to do good. Whatever we need, the Holy Spirit can make it happen. That's why the Holy Spirit is the best gift of all. We might think of God as eternal and unchangeable, but the Holy Spirit is the part of God that is always moving, changing, and bringing new life. The God that is actively involved in the details of our lives. So I challenge you, try praying to the Holy Spirit. You may be very familiar and comfortable with praying to the Holy Spirit, and you may not be. In Episcopal churches, we tend to downplay the Holy Spirit because we don't want to be like those holy rollers or anything. But man, the Holy Spirit is powerful. And we should really be using our whole beings to pray to the Holy Spirit. If Jesus thinks the Holy Spirit is the best gift ever, let's go there. I especially pray to the Holy Spirit when I am lost, literally or figuratively. I have literally prayed to the Holy Spirit when I don't even know where I'm driving. But I also pray to the Holy Spirit when I don't know what to do in any particular situation. 
Turn to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will turn you the way you need to go. Now, I pray for many people and many things. I also pray for St. John's regularly. I pray for myself here, that I will be led in the way that creates the most life for this church and for me. And no matter what I pray for, it is so interesting to me, but the Holy Spirit keeps showing up. Just before Easter, the search committee in the vestry met for, for a whole morning to contemplate the future of St. John's through worship and prayer and conversation. We all wrestled with the real challenges facing the church. And people were able to speak with love and pain and honesty. And what surfaced in that morning was a sense that, to paraphrase Monty Python, we're not dead yet. <laughs> and there was some real energy and openness to trying new things, to thinking outside of the box. And that, friends, was the Holy Spirit showing up. And then we put together a visioning team to figure out, well, what could be a possible way forward? I was aware of the Genesis 2 program that the Episcopal Church provides that helps churches refocus and redevelop, redevelop. But before we even held our first meeting, Sarah Larson forwarded uh, an, an email about the BTS Center program for fostering imagination in small churches. And it was only about a week before the application was due. And I was like, well, this looks interesting, but wow, that's a short time frame. Anyway, on a Tuesday in May, we gathered by Zoom to try to discern which, if either, program to follow. There was lots of discussion. People are lovely and opinionated in this church and speak their minds, which is such a gift. But it was going in all different directions, and sometimes it seemed to go off on tangents, and other times raising good concerns and good ideas. Finally, as time went on, I feared that there would be no agreement or clarity. So I called the question. I said, tonight you're trying to decide whether to go with the Genesis program or to apply to the BTS Center program or to do neither, or apply to both. I want to hear from each of you, but only speak for yourself how you are feeling led, or how you are leaning. And what happened next just blew my socks off. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit showed up. As each person spoke their truth, there became this growing consensus, this growing desire to go with the BTS program. I would never have predicted that given where we were before we we'd started that. The Holy Spirit showed up that we should at least apply to the BTS Center program to see if we could get in. We applied, we hit the deadline, and we got in. And now we're doing it, and again, the Holy Spirit keeps showing up. It's pretty darn cool. So keep praying and keep looking for the Holy Spirit to show up. Relationship with God is not easy. We forget. We get busy. We get discouraged. But God is always here, always ready to send the Holy Spirit, ready to energize, provide, forgive. So, let us turn to God daily, pray deeply the Lord's Prayer, knowing that this is where we will find what we need. Let us pray. We thank you, God, that you sent Jesus and that he taught his disciples and all disciples down the ages your prayer, this simple and deep prayer. 
And we thank you that you have promised to provide for us, and more than anything else, to provide the Holy Spirit for us. We thank you that that is what you have been doing, and pray that you will continue to feed us and send your Spirit and love us and guide us. Through Jesus we pray this. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is over again. And we lift up to you along with all our lives these gifts of bread and wine. Send the fire of your spirit upon them, that they may be for us the very body and blood of Christ. Enkindle us also with the light of your spirit, that we may show you forth in all the world, that every corner of creation may be filled with the radiance of your delight and design. Send us forth in the name of the three, in the company of the saints, in the enfolding of the one, to serve your people and offer you praise by, with, and in Jesus Christ your Savior, today and always. Amen. Amen. And the Savior Christ has taught us we can pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 